Good morning, class. My name is Christian Herrera, and I'm a part of Team One along with Tyler Chambers and Laura Olivas. We are exploring the option of expanding Universal Studios into South Korea. Next slide, please. To do so, we conducted a cage distance framework analysis, reviewing cultural, administrative, geographical, and economic elements that would factor into our decision to look at South Korea. First off, cultural elements. Language in South Korea is Korean with a popular dialect of Hangul. Religion is 45% Protestant, 35% Buddhist, and 18% Roman Catholic. Traditionals, the general population is very structure-oriented, uh, certainty, uncertainty avoidance, and long-term oriented. Social norms really working in order to live. Their social beliefs consist of collective society committed to a, being a member of a group, family member, or being involved in an extended relationship. And their social values are very much focused on restraining themselves, not too much emphasis on leisure time, and control over the gratification of their desires. But that is quickly changing with the newer generations and demographics in the society because of the advent of technology here. On the other side, on the host country, the cultural elements for the United States, uh, English is the popular language. Religion is focused 70% on Christianity. Traditional norms, very focused on masculinity and individualism. Social norms, people generally look out for themselves and the immediate family. Not too much emphasis on authorities for support. Beliefs, overall focus on liberty and justice for all. And their social values include a can-do mentality, strong ideas over what is good and evil, and a overall work hard, play hard mentality. Now I'll hand it over to Laura for an administrative review. Thanks, Christian. So comparing the two countries administratively, South Korea and US have more in common than expected. Both countries are a democracy where they are voted by their citizens. Their largest political parties include a liberal and a conservative party. And one of the differences in South Korea would be that the president serves a one five-year term while the US, they serve a four-year term and can be reelected once more after that. Each country is on each other's top trading partners list with the US ranking second to South Korea and then South Korea ranking seventh to the US. South Korea bases their legal system on civil law while the US has set up common law. And while the strength and alliance was questioned in US president's past, their alliance was recuperated from the restraint. Uh, agreements were established in 1953 to help South Korea defend itself primarily against North Korea. And with these trade agreements that have been established since 1953, they are reevaluated re with every turn of leadership, with every new leader that comes into both countries. And the administrative factor has been established among both countries and has successfully been able to work through large projects and issues. So I will pass it on to Tyler. Let's take a look at the geographical difference here. Um, so what it is is first is uh, we have an image of South Korea and then I'm zoomed in as well to take a really good close look at Seoul, Korea as well, the national capital. Um, I, drew, I drew this one hour drive circle around Seoul um, because I think it'd really be important to be able to place a, a Universal Studios strategically um, closer towards the airports, which are indicated with the red markers. Um, I've also highlighted with the red numbering the other amusement parks, one, two, and three, one being Lottie World, which is the equivalent to Disneyland, um, two, Seoul Land, and then Everland as well, which is sponsored by Samsung. Um, but a really interesting fact is that there's 25 million people who live in Seoul, Korea. That's half of the nation, South Korea's entire population, which is slightly over 50 million. Um, also public transportation, they have regular and fast subways, buses, um, which that public transportation is preferred by locals. And then they also have highways as well. Um, that was indicated in orange on the right. Next slide. Now, we can take a look at how small South Korea is, comparatively speaking, to even California here in the top right. It makes up only 1% of the US. We can also see the climate here. Um, there are three months of the year that are 
really cold. Um, that would be really difficult for an amusement park, but the rest of the year, um, it is doable, it is manageable. And you can see the temperatures here on the right and how other amusement parks um, in the area overcome this is actually by having a half indoor and half outdoor um, portions of the park. Next slide. Now economics, you can see the GDP and the per capita GDP here. Um, actually in the top right, we're comparing uh, America GDP per capita um, compared to Korea, um, South Korea's in the red. Um, so it's very interesting that although not able to keep up to the same magnitude, considering their geographical size, it's, it's actually very impressive. And as time is growing, they're growing exponentially as well. Um, in the bottom right hand here, you are seeing a uh, comparative to the entire globe of the per capita GDP, and you can see that they are the dark red, which puts them into the highest tier. Next slide. Now, if you're curious about where, who do they export to, here's the top four on the left, China, US, Vietnam, and EU. And then also, if you're curious about what are they exporting and what are they importing, that information is available here as well. Next slide. Here's a nice little comparative analysis as well to be able to look at the two countries, um, really overall looking at the economic growth, um, or sorry, the over economic score, um, as well as the national rankings is the two most noteworthy points here. Next slide. All right, gamsamida everyone. Also, thank you in Korea. Thank you for your time. And next slide to take a look at the sources. We look forward to hearing your feedback. Thanks.